Going to take a final look at the Reaper tool head. We're going to go over the components and then I'm actually going to install it on my V2.4. So let's start off by taking a look at the carriage. There are several versions of the carriage available. There are the AP design and machining carriages if you're using a standard MGN12 or MGN9 X-Rail. This is the TAP version, which is specific to any Voron or other printer running TAP. So there's not a lot to it, it's just one piece. These channels slide onto the screws that were used to locate the Clockwork 2 extruder. There are a couple of heat set inserts in the top and four on the front for the hot end mount. The other thing you can see here is there is a tiny piece of PTFE tube. It's very easy to install this PTFE tube. Temporarily mount your extruder on top, feed the PTFE through the bottom until it hits the extruder, and then just take a razor or other very sharp knife and get a clean flush cut across the bottom. The system is designed to be modular so that the hot end can be removed without having to worry about removing this PTFE tubing. So that's why this is in two sections and we'll get to the other section in a moment. Next up is the extruder. As I talked about previously, the whole reason for me looking into the Reaper was that I needed an extruder with filament switches. So this is the wristwatch G2 with two filament switches built in. You can see there is one at the top. There's the wires for that. And then we can actually see the, the switch on the bottom. There's a 5.5 millimeter ball bearing in there that interrupts the filament path so that when the filament comes through, it activates those switches. I'm also using an EBB36 CAN tool head board. So I've got the mount for that installed. And I wound up just using some brass standoffs on this lower piece because I forgot to print the printed standoff. The stock thumb screw interferes with one of the fans. So this is just an M3 by 20 screw where I've moved the plastic washer and the spring over and put an M3 washer under the head for tensioning and it works just fine. Next, we'll take a look at the hot end mount. This is the mount. There are versions for most popular hot ends. I'm running the Dragon UHF. This has got one of the Vendor 3010 axial fans for hot end cooling, which is why we have this third yellow wire to be able to run a tack. I'm using one of the heater elements from Luke's laboratory. So that's a 100 watt heater because I like things getting hot quickly. If you look on the top, you can see that there is that other section of PTFE tubing in there. Same thing, once the hot end is mounted, you can just push the PTFE down until it bottoms and then flush cut across the top. And I've also done a little chamfer on the inside to make sure that the filament feeds cleanly. And you may be asking yourself why there is an EBB36 connected to this. And it is simply because it is a real pain to deal with these Phoenix connectors once this is in place. So it's easier for me to just leave this pre-wired for now. One of the caveats with the tap mounting system is that the carriage has to be slid up from underneath. Because of that, there's not enough room for the extruder to clear the X-beam. So essentially, I have to take the entire thing apart to remove it. If you're using the APDM carriage system, it slides down from the top and you can remove the entire tool head in one piece, which is great and convenient, except I use tap because I have a mag bed. So I live with compromise. And finally, we have the cooling ducts. This assembly is made of three pieces. There is the center that has the decorative grill and the logo area. The ducts are screwed in with screws here and here. So you would normally have to pop the logo piece out to be able to install those. Then you put the logo in. 
I have my nozzle LEDs in and wired. There are these very thoughtfully done channels that keep the wires tucked to the side. They dress up to the center. And then I have the line that will go to the EBB. The fans are held in place using heat set inserts put into the fans themselves and then a short screw. I've got a lot going on with the wiring here because I've changed how I wanted things wired with the fans. But you can see that I'm taking this fan that's running across. I'm using the zip tie points to keep that clean. And then this joins into this JST, so that will plug into the EBB36 to run both fans. One thing to be aware of is you do have the open side on the inside on this fan. So once this is mounted, you are definitely going to want to do some cable management to keep those wires off this fan. Ask me how I know. So that's the major assemblies of the Reaper toolhead. Let's get over to the printer and get this thing reinstalled. All right, let's get this installed. So you can see here, I have the tap mount front and center, and I'm going to take the carriage and get that installed. So that's going to slide up the slots on these screws. There will be screws that will go through the bottom here, and then I will tighten these screws to clamp through those holes. Put that up. And we'll get the other one started. Tighten this one. Okay, now that those are tight, I will tighten the top screws, which will lock this onto the tap. And that is that. So next, let's install the extruder. Here is the wristwatch. Screws are already in there and I've got it centered on that stub of PTFE tubing that is coming up from the carriage. So now I just need to get this tightened down. This side is a little tricky because of the tension arm, but it'll go. And there is that. So now, time for the hot end. So the hot end will slide into these two grooves. Just try and be careful of the wires. And then once that's seated, there are four screws that hold that into the carriage. One thing that's really nice about this design is there are a lot of zip tie anchoring points throughout. So you can route your wiring in whatever way makes sense for your tool head board or chain setup, whatever you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and zip tie the thermistor and hot end wiring in here to tighten that up against the carriage because I'm not going to be able to get to that once the cooling ducts are put on. This just feeds through like that. Tuck these up. And then that is ready to go. And the other thing I will do while I'm here is I'm going to go ahead and mount the EBB36. Just 
Just get all of my wiring pulled aside here so that everything will be in place for when I need it. And as I said, this is the order of operation that makes sense given my particular setup. Yours could be completely different. Uh, there are numerous ways that you can build the Reaper. There's a lot of flexibility. And again, if you do use the Reaper carriage, then my understanding is that you could lift the entire tool head off in one go. So you don't have to assemble everything in place. So that's mounted. Just going to get a couple of things plugged in here. So there's the thermistor, there's my filament sensors, getting the tap sensor plugged in. I'll pull over the tack wire for hot end fan. Here is the extruder and Hot end fan header I will do in a moment. Starting to shape up. Now finally, I will get the cooling shroud. The shroud slides in place and there are these pins that go into those slots to locate them. Actually, let me slide over here. And once that's in place, you use a screw on either side to screw that into hot end mount. And that's it. I just need to finish plugging the wiring in and I'll be ready to fire it up. So after zip tying the wiring into place to make sure everything's neat and that it's not going to get into that left hand part cooling fan, the tool head is up and running and ready to go. And I'm going to do the infamous water test. This thing is ridiculous. So here is 25% fan. Not bad, we've got some water moving, but let's go to 50%. The nozzle is about 10 millimeters off the surface of the water. I'm trying to keep as much of the water off the tool head as possible. Let's go to 75%. And what the heck. 100% cooling. The output of the part cooling fans on this tool head, is, it's just ridiculous. It's a very straight line of airflow in the duct, so there's not really much obstructing it and you've got two 5015s. I am using West 3D's Vendor fans, which are the highest output 5015s I have tested. Uh, I used to think that the Delta was high output and these just shred it. So here is the, the Reaper. It is a great tool head. 
So a couple last things. There's a part called the bum stop that you can install on the X idler. If you're using sensorless homing, that gives the tool head something to hit before this fan actually goes into the belt, which would not be good. And also be aware that this fan duct can likewise hit the front idler if you're trying to home X with the tool head all the way to the front. So you may just want to be aware of that. Maybe update where your printer parks the tool head. I know in my print start, after I do a QGL, the printer then rehomes. So I have a line in the print start macro so that after it successfully QGLs and the tool head is here by the front idler that it moves 50 millimeters back and then rehomes. So just a couple things to keep in mind, but overall, uh, this is a fantastic tool head. I really want to say thank you to AP and everybody over at the uh, Reaper design team. They've done a great job with this. Um, now I have a tool head that has the pre and post extruder filament sensors, which will be very useful in the projects that I'm doing with uh, multi-material units. So I hope you found this interesting and stay tuned because there's more projects coming.